Well, hey, Jordan and all the other viewers out there. I hope my most recent subscribers didn't waste all of their most colorful insults on those last couple of videos because I'm particularly happy with what I'm about to present to you today. I'll be reading most of it, and I'll give you a transcript in the sidebar so you can more easily pick it apart. And uh, and also, if, if you just like to read this and you don't have time to, to sit through the whole video, you, you that option is open to you as well. But I suppose what is even more a shame than just possibly running out of insults is the fact that most of you are not subscribed to Jordan. Jordan is an atheist and he's a genius among you. There's no reason he should be sitting at some what did, what did, some 200 subscribers. Go subscribe to this guy and get him in the game. You want him on your side. You want him fighting for you. Believe me. In fact, for some of you more obnoxious viewers, you can skip this video and just go subscribe to him. You'll be doing me a favor. And for everyone else, I hope you do both. So Jordan, let's play. In your first objection, you demonstrated a predictive error of affirming the consequent. This was only made possible by the predictive nature of the statement you offered as an alternative to my own. And had you attempted to critique the original statement in the manner you did, no error of prediction would have been found for the simple matter that the original statement wasn't predictive in nature. But you are right in in saying that we cannot substantiate either statement by making prediction that affirms its consequent. In your second objection, you appeal to the fact that science is limited in its success in predicting anything. This objection is not relevant since, however often science might be wrong in its predictions, the matter of the statement is to identify the reason as to why science is ever right when it is. Lastly, you suppose there is something wrong in using science to justify something that science already assumes. Uh, that would be correct if the original statement was making a claim to justification, but it was not. Uh, similar to before, the original claim that I gave you reads axiomatically. If you accept these rebuttals, Jordan, and uh, the rest of the viewers out there, I would like to present something to you all to add a little bit of depth to the original statement. Consider for me a method of prediction. It could be anything. Consider flipping a coin to predict if it will rain tomorrow. Say I explain this is possible because of omniscient spiritual activity that would affect the outcome of the coin toss. Predictions arise from inference, right? And inference is substantiated by assumption. And here it is to assume that omniscient spirits can and will affect how the coin will land and I suppose not lie in doing that. And from that, we infer whether or not it will rain tomorrow based on what the coin says. It's important to note here that the coin isn't dictating whether or not it will rain tomorrow. It's simply predicting whether or not it will, it will rain. And our method, our means, our vehicle of inference is what the coin says. And that inference is substantiated in the assumption that there's an omniscient spirit. However, if this assumption of inference is wrong, which is to say if it is not true that the coin is influenced by omniscient spirits, then the predictive power of the coin toss will be no better than chance. Now consider dowsing. Though there are variations, say I uh, explain you can douse for water holding two metal rods, and suppose this would be possible because the nature of your subconscious mind is connected with an omniscient matrix of information, where in the right frame of mind you can channel the influence of this matrix such that the rods cross when you are near water through an acknowledged idiomotor response. From inferring the position of water from the crossing rods, assumes that the mind of the dowser is in fact connected with the omniscient matrix and his subconscious mind will cause the rods to cross via an idiomotor response in order to communicate uh, with the conscious side of the dowser. If the assumption is wrong, then the predictive success of this dowsing method will only be as good as chance. Now consider science. Why might we suppose that science is distinct from tossing a coin to an omniscient spirit or opening up and channeling an omniscient uh, matrix of transcendence? 
science is distinct in really the only way a method of prediction can be distinct, and that is in its assumption of inference. With the coin, it was the omniscient spirit. With the dowsing, it was the omniscient matrix. Science is distinct in its assumption that lies at the base of its method of inference. To study the tensile strength of a, a steel bar of a known length and density, pressure is applied to either end until the metal bends. Such study is empirical, uh, meaning it is a study of that particular bar of steel. The study does little for us since though we know at the end of the study the tensile strength of the bar before we bent it, it is now bent and the structural integrity has changed. However, it may be that other steel bars of the same length and, dex and density, like the one we started with, uh, will have the same tensile strength under same conditions and actually perform exactly the same if it was possible to perfectly control for all variables. This is an inference and is so aptly named empirical inference and it is the mechanism by which science makes its predictions. For science to make empirical inference science must assume that nature operates by an absolute. That's the only way it allows empirical inference to make predictions on nature, on nature, on evidence gathered empirically in a lab. Scientific prediction is characteristic in its empirical inference and empirical inference assumes that nature operates by an absolute and there we demonstrate the assumption of scientific prediction. If science's assumption of inference is wrong, we can still expect scientific prediction to have correct predictions, just like we can expect that the coin toss will be right some of the time. But its predictions will be no better than chance. So the question presents itself. How could science ever predict better than chance. A predictive method, whatever it is, will perform better than chance only if its assumption of inference is right. In the case of empirical inference, it is to assume that nature operates by an absolute.